Hi, this is Jan with Gypsy Studio where we love to create and we thank you for joining us for this tutorial today. All right, let's get started. You can use any paper. I'm choosing to use this uh, Canson watercolor pad because I found it at an estate sale and it will work great for testing out this tutorial. It's got a smooth and a rough side. I'm going to be using both sides just to see how I like it. We're going to be using three different gessos. The first one is the Liquitex gesso and it's usually a gesso that everybody uses. It has a pourable consistency. Also, I got in my recent Cheap Joe's order their, a sample of their Joe's really good clear gesso, so we're going to try that one. And then finally, my favorite gesso, which is from Utrecht. It's acrylic artist, acrylic gesso, and it is really, really thick, almost like a paste. I use it for all my acrylic underpaintings because it is the best one I found for that purpose. So we're going to try all three for this gesso resist with stencils tutorial. So I'm squirting out just a little bit of the Joe's Clear. We're starting with that. I'm going to do this on the rough side of the paper. And I put it in a little uh, container like that because it's easy to sponge. Now I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit there and watch me sponge gesso through the entire uh, stencil. So we'll speed that up. Again, you just need a light coating. Uh, you can do it haphazard or you can fill in every space. It's up to you and there you can see the result. The uh, the next gesso that we're going to use is the Liquitex gesso, and you can see how much more liquid that is, so that's going to go on a little bit thinner. Uh, you have to be careful that your sponge is dry so it doesn't uh, get, get too wet and go underneath your stencil. Again, I'm going to speed this up, but that goes on beautifully, and you can see the result there. It's a beautiful result with the Liquitex and the stencils. I'm going to be doing many more stencils, but I'm just showing, showing you these, uh, putting on the gesso with just uh, a few of the stencils. And finally, the Utrecht gesso is really thick. It's like modeling paste or uh, stencil paste. So I use a key card or an old credit card or something like that, scoop it up and just scrape it through the stencil. And I try and fill in every space. Again, you can do it haphazard and leave some open spaces if you like. But I cover in all the stencil, and I also do the outside of the stencil as well. So you've got those designs at the corner of the page as well. And there you can see the results. It's nice and thick. It gives almost a, it gives a raised effect, definitely. And it's a little bit uh, shinier, if you will. So it's going to resist the paints and stains more, I think, than the other gessos. But we'll see. Okay, I wanted to do one more stencil because I really like this ginkgo leaf stencil and it turned out really well. It's easy to sponge the gesso through and it turned out so well I may even save this, let it dry and flip the stencil and add more leaves onto it. But as you can see, it really turned out beautifully. And I think I'll use the Distress Stains on this one uh, for a lighter look. So we'll see how that works out. Okay, I won't... Uh, make you watch me stencil or put gesso through stencils anymore but I did want to show you a variety of other stencils I have that I may use uh, and then I'll show you the results afterwards. Um, Hound's Tooth Check, that's a good background stencil there. I also have some smaller stencils like this Harlequin one and I have a vintage ledger stencil, a mask, that's a mask there with numbers. Uh, so I'll use these or a combination of these with the various gessos and then show you the results once I've let them dry. Oh, this is Donna Downey's poppy one. Love that one. And so I'll do some more stenciling, let them dry, and then uh, catch up with you and show you the results once they're dry. Okay, so here is a quick run through of all of the gessos. This is the Utrecht gesso, so you can see it really uh, gives you a nice raised effect. This is the Liquitex Gesso. This one is Liquitex, turned out beautifully. Liquitex Gesso on the wallpaper one, the Ginkgo leaves as well, and then the Harlequin as well. Then I did some smaller ones, and this is the clear Gesso. You can't see it, but we'll see how it works with the inks, and then some small test strips I made. 
Okay, so now the fun begins. We're going to start with this stencil gesso that I used for, with the plaid stencil and the harlequin. I'm using the Adirondack color wash in sunset orange and red pepper. And I love that color combination, but I don't like the sprayed look. So always have a shop rag handy or an art studio rag handy. And I'm going to just smooth it out to make sure that I get complete coverage and also get that smooth look. I like that much better, but we'll see what happens with all the other ones that we do. So there's that one. The This is the Adirondack color wash as well. And uh, I believe those color, it was the purple and the magenta or plum color and spritzing those on just in a random manner. And then also using the radiant rain uh, has a little bit of a glimmer to it. And I love that. And again, I'm probably going to do the same thing here and smooth it out a little bit because I think the gesso shows up more. Uh, I may leave one of these with just the sprayed look and see how it dries, but I love the way that this looks uh, like almost like velvet wallpaper, but I love that look. Okay, here are the poppies. I'm going to do this with orange and uh, wild plum, I believe that is, and I sort of like the way that this is uh, looking and I decided to try and spritz a little water on it to get rid of some of those spray spots. Worked really well and then I started loving what was happening with this. So. I may just leave this one exactly like it is because it turned out so gorgeous. We'll see how this one dries and I will show you afterwards. All right, here are the ginkgo leaves. I'm going to use uh, Broken China and uh, Peeled Paint, I believe is the color of the Distress Stains on this one. I know it's going to give me a little bit more of a pastel look, which is sort of not my thing, but uh, we'll see how it works. I'm spritzing it with water first, as you see there, to kind of give it a little bit more flow with the stain, and then just randomly putting the stains on. Again, I don't like that streaky look, so I'm going to take my Artist Studio rag and kind of smooth it out. I'm going to spray a little bit more water and then smooth it out a little bit with the rag. I probably didn't choose the two best color combinations, but I've only got three, and the other one was vintage photos. So this, I think that turned out nice. And then here's my Moroccan uh, stencil, which I love. Again, uh, I'm using bright colors. This is the plum and turquoise color, or crushed grape and turquoise. And I'm going to try and use one of the other stencil gessos to pick up the paint off of that versus using the rag and we'll see how that turns out. I kind of like the modeled look that it left on the Moroccan stencil so I'm going to leave that and then I'm going to add a little of the Radiant Rain Shimmer to my uh, letter stencil here which I think turned out great. Good morning, I'm back and everything has dried so I thought I would show you the end results so you could kind of see what happens uh, once they're dry. I first wanted to start off with my inspiration for this tutorial which was a trial run in my uh, everyday journal. I'm doing the documented life project weekly and this week's uh, uh, challenge was gesso and I thought I'm just going to try some things in my journal first to see how it turned out and this is that stencil that I love with the uh, uh, Adirondack uh, color wash sunset orange and red pepper and I love the way it turned out so uh, I thought I would do a tutorial using some different gessos and different uh, wet mediums so anyway this is beautiful so that was my inspiration so let's see how they turned out these two pieces I split in half to use two different colors. This was the clear gesso. And what's interesting is I thought since it being clear, it wouldn't show up that much or it would be lighter like the regular gesso, but actually it turned out darker in some places. So that's really interesting. And I think that that will definitely show up in artwork or collages later on. Then the Utrecht uh, thick gesso uh, I used in the leaf stencil and this is really shiny and thick and this is the distress inks or the distress stains sorry from Ranger and as you can see they did not stick to the gesso at all it was a complete resist uh, stuck to the paper but if that's the kind of look that you want then that's great but I wanted the gesso to pick up a little bit more of the color this is also the Utrecht gesso this is with the 
inks, the spray inks, and I think this turned out beautifully. I love the way that the gesso is very, very light, so you can see the design. It makes for a very high contrast design, so if that's what you're going for, then that's great. And you also have a lot of texture on this as well, so you could definitely do things over this and have this texture show through, which is nice. And this is another one that I did with the Utrecht gesso. Again, very raised, uh, and the gesso turns out very, very light. Uh, in uh, in this with this kind of technique, uh, these this is that small vintage ledger stencil that I did. I did it with both gessos just to see how it would work because this is the Liquitex gesso, and it turned out very very faint, which is kind of a neat sort of ghost effect if you're if you're looking for that. But with stencils that have this really really small uh, design. Uh, the Utrecht, I think the Utrecht gesso turned out really well. It held the design really well, and so it's much more distinct. So if you've got some stencils that have really small designs like this, then the Utrecht thicker gesso might be what you want to go for. And, okay, here is the uh, ginkgo leaf with the Distress Stains. Again, pastel's kind of not really my thing, but it turned out nice. It still is a little bit streaky, and this is on the rough side of the paper, so you can see the texture of the paper, and if you like that, that's great, but this would definitely be a good uh, starting background for a journal page or a piece of artwork or collage or whatever. Um, okay, so on with the bright colors. This is the Liquitex gesso with the dilutions, spray inks, and also with the radiant rain on top to give it kind of a sheen, shimmer, which you can't really see, but this is gorgeous and this is definitely going to go in some artwork or in some journaling or collage work down the road. This, again, that sunset orange and red pepper combination from the Adirondacks Color Wash. This is that Harlequin stencil and the little plaid stencil. This one dried up beautifully. And of course, my fa one of my favorites, that uh, stencil that kind of looks like wallpaper. Again, this has a little bit of the radiant rain on it, so you, it's got kind of a, you can see the sparkles in the light, uh, and you probably can't see that on camera, but this is gorgeous. This would be a great background to start with. And here's the Moroccan stencil. The nice thing about a stencil like that is it's got a lot more space for the gesso, so you get a lot more light than dark versus, versus something like this, which is a lot darker. So that's an option. The modeled effect from using the other uh, page uh, to stamp down on top of it to lift up some of the ink is kind of nice. So uh, again, another great background page. And then this is my favorite, I have to admit. It's gorgeous and the colors are really muted and the water made it run almost like watercolors. You can't see the bright orange and the plum, but they mixed to a really nice, warm, earthy kind of tones. This is gorgeous. I may not do anything with this. I may just leave it as is or just do a little bit of journaling on it. But I love, love, love that one. And I did this. This is on the smooth side of the paper, so that might have made a difference as well. I don't know what it would have done on the rough side of the paper, but anyway, that's my favorite. Thank you for joining us. I want to talk about the next tutorial which uses this. My sister picked this up for me at Sam's. Uh, it's called Sandwich Wrap, or what do they call it? Sandwich paper, dry wax paper, also known as deli paper. It's 12 inches by 10 and 3 quarters. It is uh, matte on one side and has a waxy coating on the other side. I've never used it. I've heard a lot of people talk about it, so we're going to do a tutorial with this and mono printing with my jelly plate. I only have this small one, so I'm also going to attempt to make my own jelly plate with gelatin and glycerin, so we'll talk about that in the next tutorial. So if that's something you're interested in, look for that tutorial soon. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you soon.